Hello all. Welcome back to BTO e Shikshana program. I, Dr. Sasmita Mahapatra, is here to take the second module of microwave and antennas. The second module deals with microwave network theory and microwave passive devices. Now let us start today's class, that is the seventh class. In this class, we are going to discuss regarding the microwave fed sifter. So basically, what is one fed sifter? We know that in the wave, when the wave in the waveguide, if the wave when the wave is propagating, it is associated with certain magnitude and certain phase. So whatever the electric field we are considering. So we take it as a vector quantity, which is associated with magnitude and pitch. Now, we have to change the direction of propagation. That is, we have to change the phase of the wave. So that can be done using phase sifter. So in the previous class, we have studied regarding one attenuator. In this class, we are going to study regarding a phase sifter. In case of an attenuator, we were reducing the amplitude of the signal. When we talk regarding a fetch shifter, we have to be very clear that we are not at all going to change the amplitude of the signal. Rather, we are concentrating on the phase, that is the direction of propagation. So basically, the fetch shifters are two port devices with very low insertion loss, that is very low VSWR. That means we have very less reflection. Usually we want to make the reflection completely zero, okay? So here, by inserting these pet shifters, we want to change the path covered by the wave or the path length, we can tell the path length we are going to change. Because of that, we are going to change the phase associated with the signal. So basically, we have two types of phase shifter, dielectric phase shifter and ferrite phase shifter. So coming for a dielectric phase shifter, what we are inserting here or what we are using here, it is one low less dielectric material. So when I tell it is one dielectric material, the material is associated with the relative permittivity and relative permeability. So this dielectric material can be used in a phase shifter. Usually the phase shifters are reciprocal phase shifters. That is, you give the input at port one and take the output at port two, how much phase shift we are going to get. If we are giving the same input at port two and we are collecting the output at port one, the phase shift is almost going to be same. So that is their reciprocal phase shifters. Now, coming for the construction of a dielectric phase shifter, what basically we have here. So you can see the first structure if you are considering the first structure. So we are taking just one example of a rectangular waveguide we have assumed. Now, when the wave is propagating, so suppose the wave is propagating in this direction, that is we can take it as Z direction then we can expect the electric fields to be existing which are perpendicular to this jet direction. So they are going to exist either in X or Y direction. So we have taken the electric field existing in this direction, okay, Y direction, perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Now, when the wave is propagating initially, when I don't have any dielectric kept, so we assume that the wave is propagating through vacuum. Suppose the rectangular waveguide is filled with vacuum, free space. So the wave is propagating through vacuum means this much portion is going to be associated with a dielectric constant, same as the absolute permittivity, okay? The, permitt the permittivity of free space vacuum. Now, when we are going to this portion, so this portion is the dielectric material that is inserted inside this rectangular waveguide or in this waveguide. Now, this dielectric material is associated with the permittivity epsilon r. And this epsilon r is going to be definitely different than epsilon naught. Then again, the wave is propagating here. It is propagating through the vacuum, which is associated with absolute permittivity, that is epsilon naught. Now, when the wave is propagating through different media, we know that 
the velocity of the wave is going to change usually if it is one electromagnetic wave when it is propagating through vacuum we tell that it is propagating with a velocity of light but when it is going through any media usually we write that the velocity is going to change which is equal to c by epsilon r into mu r now epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the media mu r is the relative permeability of the media since we are considering the electric field so we are here considering only epsilon r the relative permittivity we are not considering mu r the relative permeability since we are considering only the electric field okay now since epsilon r is going to change when the media is going to change the medium of propagation is going to change since epsilon r is going to change so the velocity of propagation is also going to change now when the velocity of propagation is going to change the wavelength of the signal is also going to change when the wavelength of the signal is going to change or a wavelength of the wave rather i call it as a wave is going to change so what is happening the phase constant associated with the wave is also going to change so when the total phase constant associated with the wave is going to change so the total phase covered by the wave or the phase shift there is a phase shift occurring in the wave propagation so that is the main working principle for this okay now in the construction you can see that just we have inserted a dielectric with certain dielectric constant epsilon r now because of this we are assuming that when the wave is propagating through this dielectric constant or the dielectric media its velocity is going to change which is resulting in a change in phase now let us see how it is going to happen so if the velocity we are considering the velocity of propagation through the dielectric it can be written by the equation u t the propagation velocity is equal to 1 by mu not epsilon not where mu not epsilon not are associated with vacuum the absolute permeability and absolute permittivity of vacuum epsilon r is associated with the dielectric media which is the relative permittivity of the dielectric media if fc is taken as the cut off frequency the lowest cut off frequency then f is the operating frequency then we have got a relationship where with change in epsilon r the value of velocity is going to change when we are changing epsilon r for any dielectric media now this change in velocity is going to give us a change in waveguide wave uh, the waves wavelength so the guided wavelength is going to be written as lambda not divided by 1 minus lambda not by 2a square whole square root now what is lambda not is the operating wavelength the wave whatever is propagating it is the operating wavelength okay and here when we are considering any wave propagating we just consider that it the wave is propagating in a dominant mode so we are considering here the dominant mode as t e 1 0 okay and lambda g is going to give us the guided wavelength to any media which is associated with certain dielectric constant so lambda not is the operating wavelength 2a is here the cut off wavelength for dominant mode okay so this is the cut off wavelength for dominant mode now what is dominant mode already i have discussed in the previous class it is the mode associated with lowest cut off frequency and in a rectangular waveguide the dominant mode is pe10 so for pe10 the associated uh, the associated cut off wavelength is t to a we have a uh, with the formula we have got that the associated cut off wavelength for te10 mode is 2a now putting that into the equation when we are going to change the dielectric media or the medium where the wave is propagating if it is dielectric constant is varying then the guided wavelength is going to be this okay now since we know the phase constant is equal to 2 pi by lambda so when 
lambda is changing, obviously the phase constant is going to change. So that only happens when the wave is propagating through a dielectric media, the phase constant is going to change. Now when the phase constant is going to change, obviously there is a change in pitch, okay? Now this change in or the guided wavelength can also be given by this equation where lambda naught is the operating wavelength, epsilon r square root is the permittivity of the media and this is lambda naught is again the operating wavelength, 2a is the cutoff wavelength associated with TE10 mode, epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the media. So with this, we get the phase constant is 2 pi by lambda g1. Now, what is the associated phase difference that we are going to get? So here we are getting two values of the guided wave, which is one is lambda g naught, which we can consider as the initial guided wavelength when the wave is propagating in a free space, we can consider. And when the wave is propagating in a dielectric media, considering the dielectric, the permittivity epsilon r, we are getting one more uh, wave guide, guided wavelength that is lambda g1. So according to that, we are getting two phase constant. One is beta naught associated with free space and one is beta one associated with the wave in a, uh, in a dielectric media. So taking these two into consideration, if the length of the dielectric slab, we are considering it as L, then the total phase shift that we are going to get is beta one minus beta naught into L, okay? So thus by adjusting the length of the dielectric media, we can have different phase shifts between at the incident point and at the final point, okay? Incident means where the wave is entering and at the final point where we are capturing the wave. Now, <clears throat> so this also, it is, this phase shifters are usually considered as reciprocal material, uh, reciprocal device. So as it is a reciprocal device, you give the input at port one, take the output at port two, whatever the phase shift we are going to get, if you give the same input at port two, take the output at port one, the phase shift is going to be set. So that is quickly written as S12 is equal to S21 according to the reciprocal property. Again, we have one more property. The phase shifters, we are considering that they are uh, <coughs> mass devices. That is, they don't have any reflection. <coughs> Sorry. So when they don't have any reflection, so we can take that our S11 is equal to S22 is equal to zero, okay? So considering the phase shift to be delta phi, we can write the finally the S matrix as zero, zero, the diagonal elements, which gives us that the two ports are properly matched. And we have a phase shift equal to e to the power j delta phi. Now with respect to the S parameters, the phase sector can be represented by this S matrix. Now coming further is your S uh, uh, phase sector in a special case. So this is one processor dielectric rotary phase sector. Now here what we have as you can see, like your precision attenuator, already we have discussed in the last class. So here we have a rectangular section, a rectangular waveguide, and we have one rectangular to circular transition. Okay, so this this value, this this moment, we have a change from rectangular to circular, and from here we get a circular waveguide completely. And again, at this end, at the output end, we have one rectangular to circular transition. So as we have already discussed, in the rectangular waveguide, the wave propagates with its dominant mode, that is TE10. When it enters the circular, mode, circular waveguide section, it is propagating in TE11 mode. 
then again when it is leaving the circular section and entering to the rectangular section again it is propagating in its dominant mode that is pe10 now coming to this portion what are the things that we have now here we have got dielectric plate we have got three dielectric plates and as you can see the first dielectric plate is a lambda by 4 plate that means the length of this dielectric plate is lambda by 4 coming to the third part again we have a dielectric plate which is having a length equal to lambda by 4 now these two dielectric plates are fixed okay they are not going to change their position they are going to be fixed at the center in between this two fixed dielectric we have a rotary dielectric plate so it is movable so it is it can be rotated starting from 0 to 360 degree now what is the length of this dielectric plate the length of this dielectric plate is given as lambda by 2 okay so depending on the position of the dielectric and depending on the, the position of dielectric plates and the length of the dielectric plates these dielectric plates are going to give different different fit okay. now when we are considering the electric field initially we are considering that we have perfect electric field which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation so if the direction of propagation we are taking in z then we are considering that the electric field is going to present in the y direction which is perpendicular to z direction now this electric field when it is coming first it has to enter to the section uh, where you have a transition from rectangular to circular web guides transition so the wave propagation it is going to change from te102 to te11 now this section is going to give certain phase shift depending on its alignment and depending on its length after that again we will get the shifted the already phase shifted wave which is the incident wave for the second dielectric plate which is a rotary section it is it can be rotated and here again according to the length of the dielectric plate and according to the orientation of the dielectric plate we are going to have the next phase change and then again the resultant field is taken and subsequently it is given to the third dielectric plate and according to its orientation and length we are going to get different phase now let us check how we are going to get the phase set so if you are considering the first section okay if you are considering the first section and the third section we are taking that they are fixed at an angle of 45 degree with respect to the axis of the web guide okay so these two are fixed at an angle of 45 degree the first resist the, the first dielectric uh, rod and the last dielectric rod they are fixed and they are kept at an angle of 45 degree coming to the middle section which is going to have one which is a rotary section i told suppose it is having some angle of theta now when we give the wave to the first dielectric slab so we have the wave is in perpendicular so the dielectric is kept at an angle of 45 degree with respect to the cross sectional area of the rectangular wave guide so here we are going to get two components of the electric field one is e1 component and one is e2 component now what will be my value of e1 component easily i can write the e1 component is going to be ei cos 45 and with respect to the the, the length of the dielectric or how much distance the wave has propagated the distance according to the distance covered by the wave the wave is going to have a certain phase shift which is given as j beta 1 l okay now similarly when i'll consider my second wave here e to the second 
component the electric field component e2 so it is again going to be represented by the incident electric field ei sin 45 e to the power minus j beta 2 l now here we can see the wave which is the electric field which we are considering e1 it has propagated through a dielectric material and e2 we are considering here which is propagated in the free space we can tell so definitely the wavelength associated with e1 and e2 are going to be different and definitely the phase constant beta associated with e1 and e2 is going to be different so to show that we have associated e1 with the phase constant beta 1 and e2 with the phase constant beta 2 okay now let us find out we will find out a relationship between beta 1 and beta 2 but before that ei cos 45 ei sin 45 as they are same term so we can take cos 45 sin 45 is equal to 1 by root 2 which can be represented as ei by root 2 so what we have done we can just replace ei cos 45 as e not and ei sin 45 also as e not so doing that we can write the equation E one is equal to E not e to the power minus j beta one l beta one is the phase constant associated with the wave which is or the electric field which is coming parallel to the dielectric, and E two is the electric field which is perpendicular to the dielectric. Now, as I told you, when the wave from this part, if we are considering the wave is here, it is entering something like this. So to propagate through this dielectric if, if it is entering as e2 to propagate through the dielectric now since the dielectric is having some dielectric constant so when it is propagating through the dielectric media it is going to have certain phase shift now how much phase shift it is going to have now the length if you are taking the phase shift beta is going to be changed here beta is going to be 2 pi by lambda okay 2 pi by lambda now if the length of this plate is considered as lambda by 4 then what is the phase shift that is introduced by this dielectric media or dielectric slab we can take it as 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 4 okay so lambda lambda getting cancelled we are getting it as pi by 2 so what we can tell is that this dielectric slab which is oriented at an angle of 45 degree due to its length it is adding one angle or phase shift of pi by 2 right so that is what is shown here when we are considering beta 1 as the phase constant associated with the parallel wave and beta 2 as the phase constant associated with the perpendicular wave with respect to the first dielectric then we can tell that there is a difference between them or we can tell the wave which is coming parallel with respect to dielectric is going to be lagging by one angle of pi by 2 compared to the wave which is perpendicular to the dielectric okay so that is how they have a phase difference between e2 and e1 we have a phase difference equal to pi by 2 so that is written here the phase difference that we are going to get due to the length of the dielectric is equal to 90 degree okay now how to write this so both the electric field we can write so electric field e1 is e not e to the power minus j beta 1 l which we were writing it as e dot e to the power minus j beta 2 l now beta 2 can be shifted by beta 2 can be shifted here so beta from this equation we can very well find out beta 1 l is equal to beta 2 l plus 90 degree 
or beta 2L, we can shift it to beta 1L minus 90 degrees. So that is how it is written here, this equation here in terms of beta 1L, beta 2L when we have changed to beta 1L. So we have written here e to the power minus j beta 1L minus pi by k. So we got two components, E1 and Now this electric field is going to be the incident electric field for the second dielectric, which is a rotating dielectric and which is kept at the center with, uh, with respect to any angle theta. So here we have got two components E1 and E2, which is going to pass through the second dielectric. Now here again, if we'll see, since we have got this angle theta, so we can tell that we are going to get, because of E1, we are going to get two components of electric field, E3 and E4. <clears throat> Similarly, we are going to get electric, comp uh, electric field components due to E2. Okay. Now let us find out what is the value of E3 and what is the value of E2. So if you are considering E3, we will have the components from E1 also and the components from E2 also. <clears throat> So this angle E1 uh, is theta between E1 and E3, okay? E1 and E2 are perpendicular to each other. Again, E3 and E4 are perpendicular to each other. So if this angle is equal to theta, we can take the small angle is also equal to theta, okay? So taking that, the value of E3, we can found it is E1 cos theta, if you are taking, and due to E2, we can find the component which is like this, which is E2 sine theta. Now, since this component is coming in the opposite direction, so E3 can be written as, E3 can be written as uh, E1 cos theta, E1 cos theta minus E2 sine theta, with respect to that, we will have a phase difference due to the propagation constant beta two and due to the um, due to the phase constant beta two and the length of the dielectric. Okay. Now here, one thing you have to remember that the phase shift introduced by this dielectric material is going to change. Why? Because this dielectric material we have taken it is a lambda by two dielectric material. Then what is the phase shift that we are going to get? Two pi by lambda, the phase constant into the length lambda by two. So that is going to be pi. Okay. So the phase shift introduced by this dielectric material is going to be pi. Now we have got the value of E3. Similarly, we can get the value of E4 also, where E4, if we are taking this angle as the small angle as theta, so E4 is equal to E2 cos theta plus due to E1, it is E1 sine theta into E to the power minus J2 theta. Now comparing with the previous equation, <clears throat> so, this equation, if we compare with respect to E1, E2, and coming here to E3, E4, so they will have a phase set equal to J theta, E to the power minus J theta, due to the change in orientation of the dielectric field, which is changing with one angle of theta. So that will introduce E to the power minus J theta, plus they are going to get a phase shift of pi, which is associated due to the length of the dielectric material or the dielectric slab, which is given here as the previous case, it was e to the power minus j beta 1L. And here, since the length is double of the previous case, so we are adding minus 2 beta 1L. So the total is the change in the propagation phase constant is going to be 3 beta 1L. Similarly, if you are considering the E4 component, already we had a phase shift in the previous case, e to the power minus j pi by 2, which is considered here, and accordingly we are getting the E4 component. Okay, now this E3 and E4 electric fields 
are the incident wave or the incident field for the third uh, dielectric constant, which is again associated with a 45 degree angle. Now, if you are considering this E3 and E4, so with respect to this dielectric slab, we can have again two more electric fields. One is E5 and one is E6. So if we write E5 component, so and E6 component, similarly, we can see that with respect to E3 and E4, so E3 cos theta, since this angle is theta, E5 can be written as E3 cos theta plus E4 sine theta e to the power minus j beta 1 L. Now here we have added the change in angle theta due to that the phase shift again e to the power minus j 2 theta we have made in the previous case it was e to the power minus j theta we have added here the phase shift theta due to the orientation of the dielectric uh, slab and due to the length of the dielectric slab again we have added one more beta 1 l so the total phase shift we are going to get is e to the power minus j4 beta 1 l again it is going to change similarly e6 this electric field also we can derive it in terms of e4 and e3 so the same way we can find out so it is going to give us so if you are taking this angle as uh, theta and if you are taking e3 effect which is just in the negative direction so accordingly we can write e4 cos theta minus e3 sin theta into e to the power minus j beta 2 okay since it is e5 is the component along the dielectric material so it is associated with beta 1 l we are writing and e6 which is perpendicular to this so this is associated with the phase constant beta 2 we are writing okay so accordingly we get the final field that is E5 and E6. And if you'll see, both the fields are going to be same. Now, at the output of the uh, phase shifter, we want to find out what is the resultant field that we are going to get. So the resultant field we can get here, if we are considering E5 and E6, both are perpendicular to each other. So by putting uh, the, uh, the rectangular component theorem. So we can have the resultant field is given as E out, which is square root of E naught E to the power minus two theta E to the power minus J beta one, four beta one. So this gives us a relationship between the incident electric field and this is my output, the final electric field, okay? Now theta can be varied, it depends on the uh, orientation, how we are keeping the dielectric slab. And four beta a one L, this value is fixed because it depends on the length of the dielectric slab that we are going to get. So at a given frequency and structure, a phase shift of two theta can be obtained by rotating the half wave plates, okay? precisely through an angle of theta. So when we change the center rectangular, uh, the center dielectric slab by theta, according to that, we are going to get one effective phase shift of two theta. So um, accordingly, we are going to change the output. Now this output, if you are taking, so we are going to have the same magnitude but only there is a change in phase. So this is the work of one phase shifter. So it is giving us one output with a phase shifter. Now this is one dielectric phase shifter. And as I told you, there can be one ferrite phase shifter also. So let us see what is one ferrite phase shifter. So the first thing is, as the name suggests ferrite. So we are going to keep uh, one insert a ferrite material here, the ferrite material. And when I think ferrite material, we can assume that it is related with magnetic field, magnetic flux, magnetic field, all those things. Now, the first thing is, it can be reciprocal or it can be non-reciprocal, okay? In this ferrite receptor, it can be reciprocal or it can be non-reciprocal. 
depending upon whether the variable differential phase shift to the device is a function of direction of the propagation or not. <clears throat> So most of the ferrite materials have relative dielectric constants in the range of 9 to 60. And according to that, we have tangents are really small in the ferrite material. Now what happens here when we are considering any ferrite material, the permeability of the ferrite depends on the RF magnetic field configuration in the medium relative to the static magnetic. Now, if the RF magnetic field is going to change. So accordingly, the permeability of the ferrite material is going to change. Once the permeability is going to change, so what we can see, there is a change in phase constant because phase constant can be given as omega square root of mu epsilon. So what is the main working principle in this ferrite phase shifter is by changing the direction of RF current, or by changing the amount of RF current which is flowing through the ferrite material. So we can change the magnetic field associated with the ferrite material or rather I'll tell the magnetic flux can be changed. Now, once the magnetic field is changed, the magnetic flux is changed. Accordingly, the phase constant associated with the ferrite material is going to change. So beta value is going to change. Now, when the phase constant is going to change, so obviously there is a change in phase for the wave which is propagating through the ferrite material. Now let us see the structure. So we have taken a ferrite twin toroid phase shifter. Now as you can see here, we have gone for ferrite toroids here. So two ferrite toroids we have taken here. Through this is just like a rectangular webguide. So this passage is just like a rectangular webguide. This is just like a rectangular webguide. Now here what we have tried to do is we have tried to pass the RF current through this rectangular webguide. We have ferrite toroid here, ferrite material here, and here we have the ferrite material. Now when we have, we are sending, and this, this place we have a dielectric spacer, okay? This dielectric pressure width can be changed. Now when we are sending the current through this ferrite toroid and the current direction is going to change, then the mag associated magnetic field which is going to be generated in the ferrite material is also going to change its direction. Now, according to that, what we have, suppose in this case, you can see the electric current direction is clockwise. And here uh, we have just taken it is opposite to the previous case. So if you are considering that, then in one case, we can have a magnetic field in this direction. And in the other case, we can have a magnetic field just reverse direction. It depends on the direction of current flow. Now, according to that, what happens? There is a change in the phase constant associated with each of the ferrite toroid. Now here, the phase constant can be the propagation constant, which is positive bias field structure for the ferrite. And the other one we can have, which can be negative bias field saturates for the uh, ferrite structure. Now, one is B plus, one is B minus. We are getting two different, different phase constants. So the maximum amount of phase shift per unit length, if you are taking, so it is going to be B plus minus B minus, and the total phase shift means we have to just multiply it by L. So L is the, this, the length of the ferrite toroid if you are taking. So accordingly, we are going to get a phase difference of phi. Okay, so this is the working principle and this is the working of a ferrite toroid. So here, if you are getting one place, if you are getting the phase constant is beta plus and one is beta minus, then according to this, we are going to get a resultant phase shift of phi. So this is the way one ferrite toroid or this ferrite phase shifter is going to work. Now, it, as I told, it can be reciprocal, it can be non-reciprocal. So the way you give the current in this direction, if you are changing it, or if you are changing the current direction from this side to this side, then obviously the value of beta plus and beta minus is going to change. In that case, phi is going to change. So it is. it may be same, it may not be same. 
Okay, that is why it can be reciprocal, it can be non reciprocal also. So, that is all regarding the microwave receptors. Now, in the next class, we will discuss some other microwave passive devices that is a T junction. What is the T? How it is going to work? What is the use of this T? We will see all those things. Okay, so thank you. See you soon in the next class.